Hello everyone. So this talk is regarding the use of confirmable prediction for the enterprise disk driving prediction. The work has been done with the collaboration of with Dell Technology, and here uh, we have Hemant with me. Let's begin with the agenda. So first, we will just walk through the existing machine learning algorithms that which we usually use to solve any of the problem statement be of the any domain. But here we will be focusing more on the enterprise test drives because that's the point point of discussion over here. That why we need <clears throat> a, a customized and a different approach rather than the existing machine learning algorithm. So just to give you a high level overview that the existing machine learning algorithms are just the point prediction and they are mostly like fitting the curves of, for example, in regression or regression algorithm. And for classification, we will be having, which we are going to demonstrate in this uh, talk, that classification, they just give you the confusion matrix and the overall accuracy of the overall model. No. Another thing is that there's a kind of a <clears throat> slight slight gap in like how the inference is done in a machine learning algorithm now. So the gap is that we get we don't get a quantification uh, quantification matrix. We only get a point prediction. Now the reason of emphasizing this is that once we get the the complemented metrics, then we will be able to justify the beauty of using uncertain uncertainty quantification. And uh, overall, this is based on an algorithmic randomness and underlined there are well-known statistical principles. So that also we are going to, going to discuss in the fo uh, following slides. Now, once we understand what is algorithmic randomness and the reason of using it, so they are the foundation of, of confirmable prediction, which, which, is, which, which we can imagine just like a wrapper over any of the machine learning algorithm, be it classification, regression, time series, uh, clustering, any, any uh, problem statement in machine learning. <clears throat> Another fact is that this is an algorithm agnostic. So we are free to use our favorite algorithm and just put a wrapper over it and get a confidence and the credibility associated with it. Now, after understanding that what is confirmable prediction, uh, we also need to show a real-time use case. So for that, we had a collaboration with Dell and we used some of the open source data set, uh, which, are, which, which will be shared in the references section. And that we have used, and uh, with that we we came up with like uh, three use cases. So those three use cases we will be implementing confirmable prediction, and we will show around that how using confirmable prediction over those three use cases will make a difference. In fact, in the in the quality of the prediction, and to the end user, how they are, they are going to make a decision over it. So the most important part will be the inference. Now let's get started with the motivating example. Let's take a let's take an example of three use case. Although this these three use cases are just a small subset of various uh, problem statement associated with disk management, which can be inventory management when the drive has to be dispatched. So we are not going to cover all those detail those those we can be those are just an open-ended problem statement which can be solved once we understand how we how we can solve just a few of them so for example health analysis of a disk drive usually if you see any any of the storage storage system so over there they will be having a drive failure mechanism identification which some of them use a rule-based few will use a machine learning method few will few will take a hybrid approach, statistical and machine learning. Uh, 
but there's a problem that it's just like a binary it will just say it is going to fail or it is normal or whether it is running they don't tell you the latent failures which might fail in the future or which is going to fail or or uh, which is on the threshold of getting getting on the borderline of like normal and normal and uh, the failed one so if we can get a quantification of like if the disk is how healthy it is so that will make a reasonable decision making and in case of a critical risk critical systems these are really important to get a very minute detail of how how um, how healthy or unhealthy it is so here the quantification will be how much so this is the prime prime motive of uh, implementing control prediction for a health analysis another for example it's like uh, disk scrubbing now just take a take an example of like a storage system where we have like uh, more than 100 or maybe 500 disk drive so traditional approach of scrubbing is that it will be scheduled in a intelligent context window over where the system resources are not being used much and then it will just scrub it right that's all fine you you have you have a method where you can you can identify identify your window over over the system is in less resources and you just align those less resources which are not being consumed for performing a scrubbing that's all fine but why we need to scrub all the disk right so this is this is one of the way we are going to decide that which all disk need to be scrubbed so it will be selective scrubbing we will be we will be making a selection of the disk which need to be scrubbed we will not scrub all of them <clears throat> now coming back to hot sparing of the disk drive now in any of the storage system we have spare drives and maintaining the number of the spare drive is also part of inventory management so we uh, so uh, this particular hot sparing and scrubbing will be uh, will be taken care by uh, himant he will be he will be deep, he will deep dive more into how controller prediction is going to help us make a more uniform and a meaningful decision making now as we have already walked through <clears throat> uh, existing machine learning methods so this is where this is sorry this is how it goes like we will take a problem statement we will decide we want to use a statistical approach or a deep learning method and then we are going to just identify the performance metrics so this performance metrics this is based uh, for the overall model so i will explain in further slides that uh, the metrics for a whole model and the metrics for individual prediction the need the need behind it and overall once we get the performance metrics we make a inference uh, based on the based on the problem statement which algorithm we have used and finally it is given to the end user administrator or a human intervention intervention which make the final decision so this this where somewhere we feel like there's a missing link for the inference part so now in the last slide i explained that we take a data set we identify a algorithm which we which can solve the existing problem statement and finally we get a point prediction which uh, in case like regression classification they will give you accuracy now just imagine that your model is 98% accurate so how about that 98% accuracy uh, is still valid for the new point for example till here xn what about xn plus 1 that that particular data was never present over here although the existing machine learning algorithm have a assumption that the new data will be part of iid but of the same distribution but still we need to have a mechanism which can tell like what is the 
quantification of uh, getting that getting that label being predicted like 98 percent or 98.99 percent uh, it all depends now let's take the approach of conformal prediction we get a new data set we feed it to classifier algorithm and this is what we need uncertainty estimate for the new label this data set it has never seen uh, sorry the model classification algorithm it has never seen this model so we will be interested in getting the confidence of the prediction for the new data point and this is the predicted label so we need to get a additional metrics associated with the new label although with conformal prediction we will get uh, accuracy and the other existing model but still we need to have a quantification so we will get something like this after applying over a classifier or any algorithm we will get the confidence and the credibility so how exactly we calculate the confidence and credibility i have explained in the further slides but still <clears throat> on a high level let's let's try to understand that what is the significance of confidence and credibility so suppose that if my new data point is x n plus one and my predicted label is y uh, y with uh, uh, with uh, like confidence of like 75 percent so it means that uh, i am 75 percent certain that my label will be the predicted label and with the credit credibility value being associated with that the quality of the data so these data point so if the credibility is low it means that this data new data point it is not a representative of the existing data set so it is out of the distribution so how much it is out of distribution even then even that we can just quantify using the credibility so here we are not interested in the credibility part this uh, we are most interested in the confidence because according to confidence for the predicted label we are going to solve few of the use cases which we have discussed <clears throat> now let's let's understand the framework behind the conformal prediction so although over here i have i have just tried to put in a simple terms a flow chart that how exactly we implement conformal prediction so the first part will be we choose a data set it can be tabular data uh, image or text you can have any type of data set and then uh, we are going to validate whether it's an iid and whether it's a exchangeability is yes or no so we text the exchangeability based on the martingales so martingales also over over here we can we can choose like power martingales so uh, then then we go for feature selection so this feature selection is not part of uh, cover prediction but we have decided we have customized it in a such a way that uh, we will be using for our problem statement so here for selecting the feature we we have used safely feature selection so this is based on a game theoretic approach and it will it will also tell you the the explainable part that why that particular feature was selected but uh, let's skip this uh, discussion as of now now let's come over here so over here we will choose our algorithm this anyone will do it and then after for this particular algorithm we are going to design a non conformity score so non conformity score is like designing designing a, a formula using which we are going to say how strange or how different is this data point as compared to all of the existing data point so even this example i will be explaining with some uh, solved uh, solved uh, solution and then once we get the non conformity score we perform a hypothesis testing and with that we calculate the p value so even for even when we even uh, i mean to say when we get the p values using p value we uh, we uh, we calculate the confidence and credibility so confidence will be 1 minus second p max value and the credibility will be the p max uh, p max uh, p maximum will be uh, for the binary binary labels which we will be calculate 
which we will be calculating. And now once we get the confidence value for each of the prediction, so according to that, for few of our problem statement, we have translated it to the health rank. So for example, if the confidence value is 97%, so we assume that it's 97% healthy because it is, it is in 97% uh, confidence with a label predicted as health as normal. So uh, we, will, we will deep dive more into it. Now, till here, we understood what is confirming framework, but the underlying, underlying principle lies, lies in the statistical approach in the algorithmic randomness. So it's, it's uh, really important to discuss algorithmic randomness when we talk about confirmed prediction because, algorit al because algorithmic randomness is the foundation of uh, confirmed prediction. So it will be very much clear when I explain with this example. So now let's take, we have three strings, A, B, and C. Now, if you see the first string, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, okay? And we have like a sec string C. So one, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 the binary sequence, okay? And let's take string B over here, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, like this, right? So now, suppose that we have to decide or we have to assign, like, which one is, random string, right? So by seeing this string A, B, and C, we can just say that string B is random as compared to string C and also as compared to string A. But now let's think this way, that how much, okay, which, which, uh, which one uh, string B is random, but how much it is random as compared to A and C? So over here, String B is less random. Uh, string uh, string C is less random as compared to string B. It means string B is more random. And now, over here, like string A, it is very 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 less random as compared to string B. So this is the way we assign kind of a quantification, like which is random and which is partially random and which is predictable. So this this problem statement is not new. It's it's quite like a decade, uh, decade or maybe like uh, uh, four, three or four, four or five year, uh, four or five decade old problem statement. But <clears throat> still, like during that time, it was not solvable because of the com computational uh, efficiency. Uh, but still, like the foundation paper, uh, which was like the machine learning application using algorithm randomness. So over there, they have tried to solve this problem as a part of an approximation. So we can, in fact, approximate how much random it is. So this is where the quantification comes. Now, let's take a very simple example. Suppose these strings are like columns of a data set, tabular data, and each column like this, like this, and like this, are like x value, x1, x2, x3, x4, like that. Right. So now, now suppose that string, sorry, uh, this call, this row and this row were the existing data set. And now we get a new data set over here. So this particular data set, we can quantify like how different it is. So based on whatever is the quantification and th this is when, like with the data set, we put a wrapper with the existing algorithm and then we make the prediction. So this is how we make the quantification of the predicted label, that how, uh, what is the confidence of being predicted? And here we have a very classical example over which states that, we, suppose that we have like uh, two and seven in our data set. So any of the prediction which has to be done for a new, which can be like new, new, uh, new input data set, so we can clearly say like two and seven. Now suppose if the data set is not clear, in fact, in our terms, credibility of the prediction. So in that case, if we get something predicted like this, so if we need a quantification to decide whether this is really two or seven. So 
Now over here, uh, this was the overall proposed framework. So we are more interested in the, this column, this column, we are more interested in this column. Uh, these, uh, the first column is like data pre-processing. Over, over there, uh, the, our motive was to make a n-step-ahead prediction in future, like in after one week or two weeks, what will be the health of the disk and the use cases. So that's the reason we used uh, we used LSTM and Kalman filter. We created a hybrid approach over here. And then before that, we tested Granger uh, causality test. And the data set was smart attributes of the disk drives. And finally, we used the safely feature for selecting what all features to be used. So this all, one, two, three, four, these all were part of a data processing. And finally, once we get the data, we feed it to the conformal framework. And then you can use any of your favorite algorithm. And then you can use inductive conformal prediction, transductive conformal prediction, which is transductive is like offline. And inductive, you can think of it like online. And finally, what you get, you get a confidence and the credibility. And then the actual inference part starts. Like you rank them and then you see like what was the potential outcome and you make the inference. So over here, I have just described like the proposed approach and the traditional approach. Now, this is one of the important slide, what I will say, which should be the takeaway of this talk. So the motive of the talk is to let, uh, let you also implement and just evaluate whether conformal prediction will be useful to your work or not. Uh, it, it need not be necessary in the storage domain, but any, any of the domain which can be solved using machine learning. So the very first paper is the foundation of conformal prediction. So uh, like this is quite an old paper, but still this is the foundation where they explain the confidence and the credibility of the of the uh, framework. And now the second second one is the GitHub repo of conformal prediction, uh, all the works. So it has all the, it has all the video, uh, videos, current papers, what are the conferences being held. And there are few tutorials, which will, which will make you kind of a plug and play with your data and, and get like how it performs. And if you are more interested in the theoretical part, you can just walk through this uh, tutorial. So they have given a classification uh, problem statement and they will explain how this can be used. So now we have understood the need for quantifying the, quantifying the uh, prediction. So let's start with the first use case where we are going to assign a health score or which which is a translated version of confidence of the prediction for a disk drive so let's let's take a uh, let's take a, a very simple example where in your system you have four disks which is a b c and d now so these are the disks now suppose these are your data set and with Four, uh, four data. Suppose that you have four data points, which is which we will consider like a historical data, and now you get a you get a white uh, data point which is new. So you are going to decide like what will be the label for this based on existing uh, data set historical data. So this is the given problem statement that we have a given described data set. And then what we need to do, we need to predict what will the label of Y using which algorithm we can, you can plug any algorithm, K and then uh, you can use deep learning or uh, any of the deep learning method, random forest, uh, SVM, whatever suits best to you. And over here, just for the simplicity, so for a hand calculation, so that once you understand how it can be done, you can design your own non-conformity score. So this is the non-conformity score over here. 
so this will decide that how strange one data point is compared to other over here we have used k equal to 1 just for the simplification purpose uh you can use k equal to 2 3 depending on like what uh, what um, performance metrics you are going to use and finally you are going to get the value of the confidence and the credibility especially confidence so if you notice i have made it like gray so i will tell you why, why it has been gray because we don't know the out, outcome of this so the first step is hypothesis testing so we do a hypothesis testing by making an assumption that this uh, the label to be predicted is failed so this is failed right and then we start calculating the non continuity score using this formula so here k equal to 1 so it will just k equal to equal to 1 to k k equal to 1 so it will only select one disk and d is the distance and ij are the values over here and y is to be predicted over here y okay and now if you see like red and green so this is just for the understanding purpose i have marked it like red and green uh red means what whatever we are assuming here hypothesis which is failed so the formula formula what we have derived is that the non community score or the strangeness will be the distance of whatever we are selecting for example a so what will be the distance of a which is near to the hypothesis so over here hypothesis is failed so which one is near to red so over here near to red is like just two y and b this is distance five and three so three is less so we mark three over here so a y so distance will be a y and now which is near right and what is uh dissimilar so dissimilar is green over here green and green so we have only one dissimilar which is connected to c this distance this can't directly connect over here so that's why we skip this so it will be c a c in a similar way as we calculated for a we will calculate for y and like this we will calculate for all of them so that is the reason we have we are calculating the non continuity score for all of them so for calculating this let's see what it will be what is the similar to this red and red are similar now which is most nearer to this three and four a this is nearer so we place it like over here y a y to a three now which is dissimilar these green and which one is most nearest four over here y c so that's why y c over here in a similar way now once we get it for the failed we will go for the green one because we have just two labels so that's why just two hypotheses we have suppose that we have like uh, multi label for example five labels so we will be making five hypotheses so now in a similar way as we calculated for the failed one we can we have calculated for the normal one so over here so now we got all the non continuity score specific to the failed and the normal one which were the two binary labels so we will derive the p value so the calculation of p value is that over here we will calculate the number uh we i, I will re-emphasize we will calculate the numbers of the value of uh, the non the score of y which are greater than or equal to the this value over here so uh, so let's let's see how we are calculating it so uh the calculated value of alpha y which is not confirmed score is 0 0.75 so now these were the historical data a b c d rows if we can think of so these were the rows historical data so now what are the values non confirming score which are greater than alpha of y so if we see only two are greater than that so it is uh, only two are greater than that and as we are saying we are calculating the number of value so the number of value are one two and three total three values so we write it three 
and what is n? n is the historical data. So a, b, c, d, four. So four plus one is five. So in a similar way, let's do it for uh, green one. So green one, one point three three is the value. So what is the value out of four, which is which are uh, greater than one point three three? We have only one value that is one point six six. So what 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 should we do? We just add the numbers like number one, number two. So that's why we will have four here. Sorry, two two here. And then we have like n plus one. So n is four plus one, five, 0 0.4. And uh, the value for the confidence and uh, the, the formula for the confidence and credibility, this is uh, just derived from the, the, the paper, uh, the machine learning approach using uh, algorithmic randomness, which I shared in the resources. So the confidence is 0 0.6 and the credibility is 0 0.6 once we do the calculation. So now let's see the confidence. So this is the label to be predicted. And we are saying that the predicted will be red. So this, the algorithm has done. Like it has, it has just let you know the predicted label. But the confirmer prediction let you know what is the confidence of the prediction. So this is 0 0.6. Now, once you know this matrix, it will help you solve uh, solve some more problem and kind of a inferential decision making. So let's see with this example that let's take like zero to 15. So assume like these are the rows of the disk and these are the, and the, these are the 15 rows, which are the new data points, which are for each disk, for example, individual disk. And we have made the, we have made the prediction like a status, like failed or normal or uh, whatever comes in the uh, binary binary labels. So with this, we get a using confirmation prediction, we get like confidence score like 0 0.95, 0 0.42, 0 0.91, right? So now, if we are as an end user, we are only given that the disk is going to be failed in like uh, two weeks or one month. So that is all fine. But how about assigning a confidence that the administrator will receive a, uh, on the dashboard that a list of the disk in a decreasing order of this uh, ranking that the confidence of this disk to be failed in next one month is 0 0.95. And 15th disk, for example, the confidence of getting failed is 0 0.09. Right. So according to this, the administrator can make a make a judgment that which disk need more concern for decision making, that which disk can be replaced first. Suppose that in an enterprise system, if we have like uh, like uh, multiple disk failing, which might come in a report that from a different uh, from different systems that they are going to fail, but in in case of like a uh, like a reduced uh, resources or the operations, it will really help in deciding which disk to be prioritized for making particular treatment. So uh, more examples will be shared by uh, say, shared by Hemant. Uh, meanwhile, I will just uh, try to conclude this uh, this um, this example with a graph where we plot the confidence and the credibility. So when we talk about like the confidence and credibility, it means that we need to have a high confidence and the credibility, which is not too low. For example, these are the data point of the predicted one, the confidence and the credibility, this, this and this. So if you see this area, so over here, what we see, like this is our reason of interest. So whichever the disk are over here, uh, we can think like these are uh, like confidence and the quality of data is also good. Now assume like this one or this one. So here the credibility is low. So we need to rethink about like our quality of data, the new incoming data. So apart from this, uh, the algorithm also tells you what it doesn't know. So, so the 
ML will any of the ML will tell you the status like failed or not. But using conformal prediction, it will also say that I don't know what is the I can't predict. It will just say. So based on that, you can make a make a decision that what exactly needs to be investigated. Now with this, um, all the all the description about conformal prediction, the uh, the the need of algorithmic randomness, the reason why we are uh, quantifying the prediction uh, values. So with this, I will just hand over to to Hemant to discuss about uh, disk scrubbing and the dynamic hot sparing of the disk drives. Thank you. Thanks, Rahul. So let's get started with disk scrubbing. Disk scrubbing is inherently associated with performing full media patch sweeps across the allocated and the unallocated disk for error detection and correction. However, disk scrubbing by its very nature itself could be time consuming since it has to scan the entire array and then scrub it. It might also lead to drive wear and induce very low drive performance. Let's see how we try to work around these issues to provide a much better and selective drive scrubbing and have the scrub time intelligently to achieve optimal drive performance for our storage systems. The proposed method is agnostic to any machine learning algorithm being used and it translates to binary classification task where you proactively focus the end days ahead, the health of a disk as good or bad. We create a bad drive set, which, which essentially has all the drives which are not healthy and quantify how unhealthy it is across the entire storage pool based on the prediction's confidence. This metric is then used to prioritize selective scrubbing of the drives. A high level overview of the proposed method can be seen on this slide. As mentioned earlier, it uses conformal prediction framework and schedules the scrubbing of the selected drives which are not healthy, specifically during the system idle time. So very smart uh, parameter data for each drive is obtained and a data set is created for every drive state either normal and fail. Using any classification algorithm, we could derive the end step ahead prediction forecast for each drive. We've used random forest in this case. Next, we design a non conformative measure for the choice of algorithm that we've made. In our case, as I said, it is random forest. We find the p values for the drives, one assuming the drive is in normal state, and the other assuming the drive is in failed state. We then create a prediction set whose p value satisfies the confidence level. For each drive, we assign health confidence. We'll have a set of normal and failed drives with an associated health score. This helps us reject all the drives with status equal to fail, while all the drives with the status equal to normal are ranked in descending order. The drives on the list are grouped in three categories, best, medium, and poor. And the scrubbing frequency is accordingly assigned as low, medium, and high. What it means is drive, which is falling in the best category, would have very low frequency of being scrubbed. On the other hand, we have the workload predictor gathering various system metrics and building an n step ahead system utilization prediction using the probabilistic fuzzy time series algorithm. Ideal future scrubbing windows are predicted based on the system utilization being under specific threshold. And together with the scrubbing frequency output, the appropriate scrubbing operations are being triggered. With this approach, the storage reliability is improved with more frequent scrubbing on drives with poor health. The storage provides a much better performance when, when scrubbing is scheduled only during lean system utilization phases and that too intelligently for selective drives only and with selective frequency. Let's move on to disk sparing and then let's look at how we are doing dynamic disk sparing. Now sparing as a mechanism is one of the key factors to be considered for system reliability. However, configuring more spares than required or shortage of spares has their own limitations. Shortage can increase the restoration time, thus impacting the system reliability. 
at the same time, when, when there is excess of spares, it also has its own financial implications. In traditional storage, the management approach is off of the drives are tasked such that everything is having a set role. In this case, if you just look at the diagram, you have specific nodes being mapped as capacity or data nodes, while there are certain which, which are mapped as spare. In most of the cases, traditional sparing mechanisms fail to achieve the dilemma of excess and shortage of spares. Because the first level of sparing method is to identify the failing or the failed drive in the RAID group and replacing it with a spare drive. Irrespective of whichever novel sparing method is applied, there is an inherent problem with these methods. The so-called bad drive, which is either a failing or a failed drive, is labeled as bad. So as such, all the drives in the storage system would just have two labels, good or bad, with the failing or the failed driver session made using any underlying statistical or threshold-based machine learning methods. This approach still has its own drawback. More prominently, it's static. That is a zero or one way of denoting a drive as either being good or bad. So the problem with the traditional approach results in just two outcomes. One being aggressive, where the admins populate the system with more than required number of spare drives and preempt the removal of the drives which are yet to fail. And regressive, where, where the admins populate the system with just adequate or lesser spares, resulting in higher downloads. Let's have a look at the proposed approach and what it does in terms of solving the problems that we just saw. Here, what we propose is a smart sparing mechanism, a mechanism which is based on the degree of badness and helps in identifying which rate group needs more attention and how to assign the spares. There is nothing great in this approach as such. It's just pure common sense of providing more attention where it's duly required. Going by the same analogy, right, the proposed mechanism does dynamic and automated configuration changes based on the degree of badness and simply said, the degree of attention required. If you look at the block diagram towards the bottom of the slides, right, you can see that the drives have not a way of denoting a degree of badness in the form of the gray coloring, which essentially shows the varying degree of badness associated with the drives, unlike the traditional approach, which just notifies if a drive is good or bad. We shall have a much detailed look at, at this uh, proposed approach in the subsequent slides. This slide depicts the architectural changes from the classical implementation. A minimum count or min spare, as well as a maximum count, also known as max spare, is maintained for every RAID group. These counts are variable and they depend upon the criticality of data the capacity nodes hold. Similarly, few nodes will always be reserved for holding user data. These are the data drives or the capacity drives, which, which are shown in blue. The difference that is the max pair minus the min pair, okay? That is something which, which we associate as conditionally user addressable, okay? And that actually serves as the dual purpose of either being a spare or being uh, a data drive. An analytics engine is provided which comprises of a classic prediction algorithm and when a buzz method and then provides the probability of failure for failing drives identified by the classification algorithm. A probability threshold is defined above which this failure is considered very serious. Here we have considered the threshold as 0 0.50. This means that if a disk has a probability of failure greater than uh, 0 0.50, then we consider protecting its data by sparing. If the probability is less, then that disk would be con continuing to be serving in near future and does not need backing. We also define the addressability enabling latch, uh, which, which actually helps us enable or disable the user addressability of the dual purpose drives. Generally, two cases arise after the count of this with, with failure probability greater than the threshold is obtained. Let's have a look at the first case. If the 
k is less than or equal to the minimum spare it means that the data disk are working fine and there is very less probability they'll fail minimum spare is enough for sparing purpose and the dual purpose drives can be used to hold the user data hence the ael or the addressability enabling latch makes those disks available for writing to the load balancer However, for any change in the probability output of the failing disk, the dual purpose disk should be capable of rolling back to the sparing role. And that provisions are also provided with the purpose solution. This slide depicts the second case, which is arises when the RAID group has more disks expected to fail than the min spare count. In this case, some dual purpose disks need to be freed up to be prepped for dealing with possible failures. After getting inputs from the analytics engine, as part of the copy left phase, the load balancer is instructed to carry out data transfer from the dual purpose disk to other data disk. Once the data is copied, the EL disables the user addressability of the dual purpose disk and it becomes a spare disk. This phase is called the spare augmentation. That brings us to the concluding part of this session. All the techniques that we have discussed in today's session are agnostic to the algorithm being used and provide reliable predictions in most of the cases with a degree of confidence and a credibility associated with each predictions. The techniques also cater to optimizing the system performance and ensure that the solution provides a holistic solution set rather than just point predictions. With all the approaches that we've discussed today, we could have several applications of those around multiple domains. A few could be around proactive dispatching of drives based on the degree of badness. In recent times, there have been challenges with continuity of supply and these techniques would surely help provide a much better and predictive part for casting, ensuring that you have a seamless supply change management. Similarly, this could also help keep a check on the CapEx and bring discipline which otherwise is beefed up to take care of unknown exigencies related to hardware failures. Other use cases could be uh, assessing criticality associated with various other hardware components. And we could also look at the environmental factors or conditions and how do they affect the criticality of any hardware components as well. I'm sure that whatever time we've had, it's too less to discuss the proposed methods in detail but we would be more than happy to take questions if there are any. And let's assume we are not able to cover all the questions as part of this session, feel free to reach out. We're hopeful that these learnings have been helpful and do share your feedback for the session. Thanks and have a good day.